Greetings and salutations, and thanks for giving the video a look. I certainly do appreciate it. Today we're going to take a quick look around Ubuntu 2204 on the desktop. I just posted a video where I upgraded it on my server. Well, since then I've been a busy little bee, and I have not only done an in-place upgrade on one of my machines, on the machine that you're looking at now, I actually switched from Linux Mint to Ubuntu 2204, so this is what would be a fresh install. And I have to say it went really, really, really well. And the upgrade in place went really, really well, and uh, the upgrade on the server went well as well. So, well, well, well. <laughs> All good, you know? And this is a slightly different experience from Ubuntu 2204. If you have been using that with their version of the GNOME desktop, then when you make the jump to 2204, if you've not looked at any of the interim releases, uh, you may be kind of like, wow. So this is the new activities, and you switch your desktops this way, or you can use alternate control and right and left arrow which is going to be nice because I've been running Linux Mint on this machine for about two years and that's how I do it when I switch desktops. If you'll remember the older GNOME experience, you did alternate control and the up and down arrow, but I don't have to worry about figuring that out. No, you do not get put the needle on the record for your wallpaper. I did that myself. I really haven't done much to this uh, at all. I mean, as far as like trying to theme it, I've played around with the font sizes a bit. Uh, we're running this video in uh, Xorg mode, and so therefore I've used the accessibility options to make the text bigger, just so it's easier for you and me to see. And uh, it is, uh, I have to say that uh, the Wayland experience is a lot smoother and, uh, than when running in X and uh, you might hear a shower kick on here in a little while guys <laughs> folks are getting ready for work while I'm sitting here doing this I got up in the middle of the night and I couldn't go back to sleep and decided to take care of this so I'm recording it in the morning uh, so let me get back to we'll get back to the whole X versus Wayland thing in just a minute here's HTOP running while I am recording uh, this machine has 32 gigabytes of memory with the we're using about 1.4 uh, gigabytes of RAM right now with all of the software that is open and uh, moderate CPU usage on this old machine these are twin Xeon processors in here this machine is from 2014 that's a cat um, so let's first off look at the new features in Ubuntu. Jammy Jellyfish, you get a lovely new background, isn't that nice? There are several visual and under the hood changes, it says in this It's Foss article. Uh, let's see what we get here that we can talk about. There's another video. We have a new dock mode ever since Ubuntu switched to GNOME as the default desktop environment. It's featured a Unity-styled full-length launcher. However, the vanilla GNOME has a shorter launcher. Ubuntu 2204 has a surprise new addition. You can change the size of the size of the dock. In other words, you can make it more like traditional GNOME. That, that doesn't bother me. I kind of like the Unity look myself. And let's see what else we got in here. Um, we can now change the colors. You can you can choose light and dark, and then you can change your accent colors. So you have a more control over what the desktop looks like. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, I will show you this weird screenshot tool in just a few moments. It's very strange. Uh, that really shows you how little things have changed because they're talking about the screen, you know, the the screenshot tool. Uh, let's see if there's anything else worth talking about. Uh, Wayland is default again. Uh, this Even if you have an NVIDIA card, it's going to be default. Now, for those of you who are not real familiar with this, Wayland is the new display 
server for Linux. It's actually been around for about 10 years. It's taken a long time for the adoption to happen. And uh, the, you know, 2004 was default xorg and this one, uh, you know. Um, well, this is not true because I'm running an NVIDIA card and I can run Wayland, so uh, where they say, however, it will be limited to systems without NVIDIA graphic cards at the time of release due to uh, some known issues. I, uh, mine comes up and it works and I don't have a problem. Uh, we got uh, Grub 206 and the trouble that comes with it. <laughs> okay, I'll have to get into that later. I didn't pay that much attention. Uh, you can uh, enable or disable animations. Woohoo! Um, so you know this is a whole lot of little things that have changed in here. Not not huge things. Uh, now, for this video, I am actually running this into. Uh, we, uh, I'm, I'm running this in an X session because the software that I use to screen capture, which is in the repositories, doesn't work with Wayland yet. So you have to log out, switch it over to X, and then, and then come back to it. And that's why you see that I have this on up here where I've got the text a little larger because with Wayland you're able to do incremental scaling which means that you can really get your font sizes and window sizes exactly where you want them and with X it was always a little dodgy and have to play with the fonts and stuff like that um, so yes and even though I was running Wayland I was able to uh, log into another machine and uh, pull in uh, an X uh, application off of another computer which is pretty awesome I don't know how they did that but it works so I haven't run into any problems the only thing that I've had happen that is kinda of negative so far is the um, I had the, the the desktop locked up on me shortly after I installed it when I tried to play a video and um, I played it with another piece of software and it worked fine it was like just I'm talking about a file, a video file, and uh, when it was trying to open in the videos application that ships with GNOME, it didn't work, but it did work when I used MPV. So, And it also worked in VLC, which are the two uh, things that I use as well. So what else is there to talk about here? Um, the uh, Firefox now comes in a snap, and that's how you install it. I don't run Firefox at all. So I removed that snap immediately and I installed Google Chrome, which I would prefer to use. And so that might be something that you know some people don't like. Some people really don't like snaps. I happen to like snaps. I've been living without them for the last two years on my Mint system because they didn't enable them by default and I didn't need to enable them. But I don't really mind that they're there, you know. So uh, the machine comes installed with a lot of snaps and a lot of the desktop components are snaps and uh, of course I've already removed Firefox from the list here but hey that's how they're doing it right if you're gonna play in the if you're gonna play in the Ubuntu playground then that's how it's got to be if you're a Firefox user and the, the really the big complaint with the snap in a fire, uh, Firefox or any browser or any large program being in a snap like that is they take a long time to load from snaps. Snaps are slower than deb packages. And uh, beyond that, I'm not going to get too too far into it. So, uh, yeah. What else is there to talk about? Well, let me, let's take a look at that weird screenshot thing that they were talking about. So... All right, take a screenshot. You can take an area, you can take the whole screen, all right, or you can screenshot a window. Well, that's interesting. See how it uh, did the window there. So let's uh, let's do an select an area to grab. We'll just screenshot. Well, let's see. Yeah, how about that much? All right, and we click. 
Let's see, what's this? Okay. It says it's on the clipboard. And it, we can save it to files, it says. Where is it saving it? It's saving it in pictures screenshots. So that was where I was playing with it before. So it created a directory in pictures, which I did not have before, called screenshots. And there's our screenshot that we took. I can hang with that. I don't need anything to be in here, but I can hang with it. So one of the things I was uh, hearing in a, another review, uh, Jay LaCroix's Learn Linux TV channel, he did a review of this, and he kind of went on at depth about how Canonical has uh, customized the GNOME desktop uh, to the point where he called it Franken-GNOME, like we have an active desktop here. You can actually uh, have files on your... It'll show files on the desktop if you put them in the desktop directory. Eh, that might not be good if it said files is ready. Is it going to crash on me and not work now? Is that what's going on? What's going on here with this? Let me try this again. There it is. Okay, it switched me over here. Uh, I know why it did that. That's another thing about GNOME that you got to get used to is that if you have this open already and you click on it again it won't do anything. But if you center click, you can get a new window. Um, now, I was going over here to get this thing, and I forgot why. <laughs> what we were talking about. What were you talking about? You see, I got up in the middle of the night and did this, gang, and I uh, haven't really been back to bed yet. And it's the wee small. It's like, it's like morning now, and uh, this is going to be a lovely day because you know what? I got to work. <laughs> I just shot myself completely in the foot with this. So I have no idea why I was opening up to this to uh, tell you now. <clears throat> Anyhow, there are uh, several small differences uh, in Ubuntu uh, these days um, than the normal GNOME experience, experience that you would get if you would install GNOME 42 on another distribution. They have kind of uh, cherry-picked what parts of the GNOME desktop from the last two or three releases they want to use. Uh, like GNOME Terminal has been replaced with something called GNOME Console. Well this is GNOME Terminal. This is what we're running here. And I, I imagine that they did that uh, for compatibility's sake. So let's see which one we've got. We've got GNOME Terminal and this is version 3.44 even though we're on uh, yeah. Well, what is that? I missed that. Hold on. Come back. Do that again. I'm going to see what that says. Yeah. Maybe this is a. Yeah, no, it's GNOME Terminal for not GNOME Console. And there was a couple of other things that changed like that. And uh, I don't care. I, I, I kind of like the canonical twist on GNOME. I like what they do with it. They're trying to keep it to almost Unity-like out of the box. Uh, for those of us who have been using Ubuntu since Unity uh, was a new thing, you know, that's what they're trying to do. So, uh, yeah, it's been extraordinarily stable. It, it seems to work rather well. Uh, my NVIDIA card, I, I didn't get the proprietary driver for it. it it's no longer supported. I need the uh, NVIDIA 340 and uh, that's not in there so I'm using the open source driver and uh, I actually found that the performance is maybe a little bit better than it was when I was running the proprietary driver on Linux Mint or Ubuntu 2004. Even when playing high res video it seems to be okay. So uh, we'll see how this goes. This is kind of a fun thing and uh, just giving it a shot so far so good uh, you know, like I said the only problem I had was trying to play a video it locked up that might have been a Wayland issue I don't know and if that continues to be a problem I might just switch over to X all the time and just stay in this mode 
So, yeah. But I'm definitely going to have to do X for screen recording because uh, the screen recording software that I have uh, will not run in Wayland. And it's simple screen recorder, which I've been using for years. So hopefully some Wayland support will come along somewhere down the road, right? Great little application, by the way, simple screen recorder. I highly recommend it, even if you do have to switch into X to use it. All right, that's going to do it for me. I'm, I'm done. I just wanted to give you guys a real quick look. This is just my first impressions. Uh, I, like I said, I have put this on three machines, one server, a laptop, and this desktop. And so far, it's been a, a really nice experience. So we'll talk again soon. Thanks for watching the video.